So the first okay this is this all of you know like python there are so many applications and i generally worry about this experimental data acquisition and control using python because that has been one area control and data acquisition i have been working for 20 25 years but not in python of course so in 2010 first time the SciPy attended in Hyderabad. It was a very exciting thing because people like uh, Fernando Perez, the IPython guy, and John, late John Hunter, they were there. And after this, I presented this device. That was that time probably the first uh, hardware device that gives a real time data acquisition with Python. So after the talk, Fernando and uh, Hunter wanted to buy something then immediately we have got some five pieces from the lead for them to give it as Christmas gift. So they took it back with them. So then I found SciPy is a good market for this device. So <laughs> I started coming <laughs> whenever he calls. Huh? <laughs> so next time, so we did a big revamping because the other device Actually, a lot of feedback came, and uh, even though we here we were planning it to mainly for the college people, actually, the experiments were designed at that level. One, one group in France they took it and deployed it in school level. So they acquired some good number of pieces and started using it, and a lot of feedback came that. And that person happened to be a Debian developer, so he ported the software, he packaged it for Debian, and that's how it's part of Ubuntu now. So based on all those feedback and everything, then there was a total redesign, so USB powered thing, but much better resolution and all, and supported something like 50 experiments, and this was presented in 2012. 2013, it became much smaller. Again, that is because of interacting with here with uh, Professor Kannan and all, then we had some interaction with the HRD ministry, and we thought we will make something much cheaper. But performance was slightly better. So this was what I presented last year. Now the trouble started. This time when he told you should come and present something, I did not have anything. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, this next term in the, I think next or next to next talk, someone else is presenting something slightly better. So that's another device. It is way. I mean, above the feature, I mean, much better than what we have. So, then if there is nothing you have developed, then you take a keynote, right? <laughs> this generally happens like, see, good football players, when they can't play anymore, they become coach or umpire or something like that. <laughs> and in politics, say, like, the chief minister is not doing well, you make him a governor, okay, sit in the corner. So, but in academic this circle, you okay, you give a keynote or something. So, but keynote speakers have a good advantage. Like if you present something, there will be a lot of inconvenient questions, how it works, you know, all this. But keynote normally, you know, <laughs> I think you are immune to that. And you are free to press wrong keys and generating false notes, everything. But I had to select a topic. I thought something from here, pick two lines, it is conference name, there is a Python for education. So we thought because this is some topic we have been discussing at least past couple of years. See the reality is there is a small number of people highly enthusiastic about Python and probably are coming attending conference but there is a large number outside there probably not even aware of their only Python they know is probably that you know reptile. But fortunately now we have an opportunity since CBSC higher up to realize this is a good option. So last year, they decided teaching them in uh, that uh, computer science 11th and 12th, give Python as an option. What I heard is they wanted to give, I mean, good Python forcibly, but there is a lot of, you know, we have always a tendency to maintain the status quo. There is some opposition, so it's, it's an option now. So at this point, People who are, you know, convinced about the advantage of Python should do something.
to improve the situation on that front, like how to go to schools and help them to convert to Python. And this CBSE's decision, they also made, you can download it from CBSE website. There is a PDF file, they have made a textbook also and that also opened. But when I started looking for material on this, I just Google search CBSE Python. This is the news I got, the second item. The Hindu. <laughs> it's a real concern. My daughter who is in 11th has been taking C++ classes since last year. A lot of that has become useless now with the curriculum change. Instead of focusing on coaching and engineering entrance exam this year, you will have to look for an extra Python class. So this is a concerned parents, you know, you and most of the time, you know, parents control the future of the students, right? Here in India, that is the setup. I personally feel if all the parents were illiterate, if you imagine such a situation, most of the students would have been better off <laughs> because they don't <laughs> force them to. <laughs> Suppose if they are not aware of existence of IATs, they will not push them to go for coaching classes and, you know, try to tune them. But anyway, that is the reality. So you have to react to the reality. So how in this, I mean, I mean, this is probably, I am not exaggerating, this is general situation. So how to do something about it? Because it's a harmful in courts, because time is getting wasted on that, right? So what we have to do is, like say, if you take another example, if somebody is mad hmm, and if you want to treat him, so you normally don't tell him, see, you are mad, take this tablet. So that is not advisable. You generally tell him, you take this tablet, it is good for your sleep or something or it will, you know, you feel better and try to treat him. Similarly, if somebody is mad about entrance exams and all, you have to approach in a different way. So you tell them, you learn something, you don't even tell that probably it is Python. And anyway, physics, mathematics, chemistry, everything they have to learn. There is no escape from that. So can we introduce Python in an indirect way so that they try to use Python? I am saying you don't even tell them that you are introducing a language or something. But take some of the topics, like they have to learn matrices. I mean, it's a very basic thing. So there is a matrix here. So then say there is something called Python and NumPy and if you type these three lines, say from PyLab import star, then there is an array 5, 10, 20 and print this, something will happen. So that will create a matrix and print the elements and we have all these NCRT textbooks in this website that I think you may be aware of that because everything is open now. So all the NCRT books, very good books you can download them. So I just downloaded the 11th standard physics and mathematics book and tried to use Python along with that. So here you can see there is four lines of Python and if you ask what is this x, this is the thing and you can give a plot. So that is giving a little bit of insight into the matrix. Suppose if you have some function how to plot it. But you can see the language overhead, all you are talking about is something like linear space they know. So short form it is a lin space. Then you only, only tell that if you call lin space like this with a start and end points and number of points, it will create a set of data points looks like a matrix only. Then you can perform an operation just like this, y is equal to x square and you can plot it. So let us take slightly different one. This is on the physics, the mechanics, like a position time graph. See there is with a positive velocity, negative and constant. So this graph, you can tell how you can generate this thing in Python. So, Every time what you are saying is, we will have only maybe 5 lines, 10 lines, maximum 15 lines of code. Nothing beyond that, 
So at least try to do that and do not worry about the programming, just try to understand the other subject whatever physics, chemistry, mathematics you are trying to understand. And here you can see that it is like plain algebra, it is not much, it does not look like a programming language at all. There is no mugging up for anything required, say like a plot, show all, you know, very evident. See this one also from NCRT textbook, it gives two graphs like this. And I do not think they ever tried to reproduce this graph. Like if some body is moving with a positive acceleration, the graph will be curved like this. With a negative acceleration, the graph, position time graph will be like this and constant acceleration, it will be like this. So just see a picture, try to reproduce it from an equation. This is very trivial because this is the equation they are learning, x is equal to x naught plus t plus half a t square. So this gives this graph for a negative acceleration. So see here initial velocity, initial position, everything has been selected. Actually this graph represents, suppose if I take something and throw it up, it comes back and this is the graph for that. This is another one, there you have a positive acceleration. So let us just try this out first. So now when we were talking about this, so one issue came up yesterday was uh, like we are saying nothing about Python, but how they are going to use it if they are not having the Python interpreter and all other required things, installation. So what we thought is, suppose say this is the code and so the easy solution is IPython, so all the tools are already available, it is just a matter of using them. So I just take this and put it in so it gives the result and if you can set up an IPython notebook somewhere on a server, you can ask them to try it out locally without any installation or anything. All they have to have just one browser to begin with. So let us try a couple of them like this, matrix 2, so this is another one, control C, it's a graph, but if you type that map plot in, in, in line, so this can be made in line, so we will just probably add that line. You have the graph. So let us take the other position time graph. We can skip some of them. Let us take this fellow. Why? We have it here. So that means we are not asking them to install Python or learn Python or anything. We are just saying some English like statements. Yeah, interrupts enabled, right? <laughs> we will we'll discuss with the experts because I am not really, so that we will get the answer after this. Yeah? So, but I will show the some animation here, so I, I have not, I have not completed, so let me just complete it, shift 5, okay. So this we have seen, this is quite easy to do and then we go to something like some numerical computation, like here we just, what we are trying to do is, see for See, we generate a set of time position coordinates and plot it 
and then the book says this is the definition of velocity, it's very fundamental of their teaching and this delta x by delta t we can easily find out from here, right. Suppose this position minus this position divided by delta t gives you the velocity. So here you come and write a small code here like this is going from 0 to 10 seconds. So you make another array that is 0 0.5 second, 1.5 second like that and fill that with here you can see x of k plus 1 minus x of, x of k by dt that is your dx by dt. Then you see the time versus velocity ground and here it, you can just looking at it you can see this constant acceleration right 15 minus 5 divided by 1, 25 minus 15. So it is a constant acceleration case. So this sort of exercises give them an opportunity to see these equations, the graphs, the numerical values, everything without really worrying about the programming language at all. Okay, then now we are coming to this. See, simulations, I have a different opinion about it. My personal view is that suppose if you want to learn something like some topic like hydrodynamics or something then you look at the simulation and run it. But the person who really learns the subject is the fellow who wrote the simulation, not the one who views the simulation. That is, that is the fact. I mean you get some idea but if you really want to learn it, you should try to write simulations on your own in a simple terms. It is like you know watching uh, Kamalasan dancing on the TV, I do not think I can learn anything out of it. So you have to try it out yourself. So here we have a small code, you can say it's slightly bigger, maybe 10, 15 lines. And what it does, it's very clear one importing the visual module and you define two objects, right, a sphere and a spring, helix. And some initial condition, time is equal to 0, delta t is there and initial displacement, velocity. And since we are trying to attack the mass spring system, the k spring constant and the mass. And in the loop you are doing a simple integration, f is equal to minus kx, well known and here it is acceleration is f by m, dv is equal to adt, right. So that means v is equal to adt you can write as v is equal to f by m into dt, right. It is all this simple equations actually. So dv by dt is equal to a, so dv is equal to adt. So then you integrate once again, you get the next position that means from initial position you go to the next position after delta t with two steps straightforward thing it's not the best algorithm of course you have to use something but here it doesn't matter then you update the coordinates so how does it run so we'll we'll go here i need a terminal So it's small program. So this is the program. So you are that small code gives this output. And now if you really want to have a detailed look at see this will keep on moving forever, right? The reason is there is no nothing to stop it because there is no damping force at all there. And if you want to look at those things. See, there is some resource which I, I told you, Prabhu mentioned about this Python book. This I just wrote it for some of my colleagues in at Calgary University. So that is, it is there a PDF file you can download from, all you have to remember is that word XPIs. So XPIs website has all the resources. And also, there is a companion program, it is a dev file is available. You can install a Debian package, it is called Learn by Coding. And there the book examples are there and also couple of simulations are there like this, a spring 3D. It is taking two of them, one with damping, one without damping, same code, just repeated for two. See, if you look at the code, one you will find there is a uh, damping term added to that, that is all. See, here is, this is a damping term, velocity dependent damping, so this will stop, that is all. And that way you can 
See this? A large number of things, a few lines of code you can generate something that is, you know, probably interesting. Like, say, let us take another small program. It generates some fractals. So, anyway, what I am trying to tell you is like, we do not get into big programs, 10 line, 20 lines and it should not even look like you are doing some serious programming, but to try to explain some physics or mathematics using that and that approach may work, it is not guaranteed to work, but it may probably interest some of the students to try it out and if they see the benefit of that, because at the moment if you go to school and tell them we will help you to go to from you know C++ to Python, then teachers who are already learned C++ quite comfortable. So there has to be some reason for you know accepting your offer. So this probably, I am not sure. And another thing is, if you talk about the resources, this whatever programs which I showed you now, it took maybe one hour to test it out and put it in this. So it's it's only that much because it is not that a challenging thing, but it's a take some time. You have to just download this uh, physics or you know mathematics books or NCRT, go through that and see what either problem solving or just you know reproducing graphs or whichever. I mean it's up to your imagination. And if you search the web, there is no dearth of material for you know to teach Python programming. Tons of material is there all the aspects of Python language and same way science simulations everything you have. But if you look for material like this you know five lines, six lines writing a simulation and then you keep on changing it, maybe it is not that an attractive area so somehow the material is less and probably the tendency is from the pro as a programmer I know this four lines then you make it hundred lines and make a very fancy thing and put it on the web. It is not that they do not know how to write a simple one, but the tendency is make it more attractive, so it becomes bigger. But for a beginner, if you say oh, learn this, you may not, but if it is 5 line, 10 line, there is a possibility. So what I like to propose is, how much time I have now? Ten. Probably we should make a collection of this sort of material, like a collection of these sort of small programs. I would say less than 20 lines. You put a cap, say nothing, we will not take a 21 line program and try to generate a, make a repository of that and we will build around this plus one and plus two subjects. And maybe all this pro, small core can have an accompanying video or documentation. I mean even your 10 line code can have a two page explanation, the physics or whatever it is. And eventually we make a Python companion for all the maths and science textbooks at school level and make that resources freely available. And it it's only needs people with minimal Python knowledge but somewhat a better understanding of the science subjects. Then probably offering training to teachers, CBSC, I mean it's not on an official, I'm saying just on a voluntary basis, I do not know how. So then the question is how to implement this. Here I just want to express my views, it may not be practical. Maybe small, you form a small group either on the web or real you know communication and I would ask how many in this room will be willing to take part in such an initiative. Probably we can go generating the material ourselves or try to get hold of somebody to do that, make a repository of that and also probably one can see instead of looking to government or some other you know, agency for funding try to raise some funds through donations and everything and like why I am saying that is suppose if you have some engineering college student who is willing to do this job good at Python and if you ask him you go to near you locate your near, nearby schools 
and give some training, there will be some incidental expenses, travel, everything. So that a student can not you know spend that money, but there may be professors, you know, UGC scale professors who wants to contribute but having no time. We can ask them, you give some money, then you spend, you know, in you know this travel support or something. But the main problem is when it it needs somebody to coordinate this. This I'll just leave it open. If any of you think that you know forming a group to implement these things, maybe after the program we can meet if out of this more than 10 people are really interested, we can try something, otherwise we can leave it. Huh? So I think part of our delay I have made up, right? <laughs> so any questions, I think, any open to questions, <laughs> so I, I take back my initial statement. <laughs> Yeah, that is Python has a visual module. There may be better things also, but what I have used is. Uh, Matplotlib is perfect on the thing, but Python visual I have a doubt. So this one. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is our program. So you are importing the visual uh, that package, then creating two geometry, one of two objects, and uh, so I'll, I'll probably change the font so that you can see that from there. Oh yeah. Okay, and I see. See the beauty is it looks like plain English. Even if you write the algebraic expression, it is it will look like this only. I mean, it doesn't resemble a, I mean, a programming language or anything. So that is. Hmm. No, no. But the question is, we have the hidden agenda, right? We want to teach Python. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Run Python on it. Mm -hmm. In which one? I, I didn't get. Uh, that's what I use. Right? Huh. Okay, okay. That that I'm not aware. Actually, even I was planning to run it on terminal, but last night you remember we had a discussion and uh, told actually if you, school doesn't have even a you know Python interpreter, how you are going to do it? Okay, so. So, so probably see all we want is these two three lines they should see the result somehow. So, so any other questions, comments or You can go to any lower level with Python, that is, that is true. Yeah. But at the moment, since the CBSC option is there, we are just thinking of 11 and 12. Oh. Okay. So, XPy slides are not here, but I can probably. Oh, no, not this. I'll just. See, it was just popping up. If you have 
the device connected, anyway, everything you will find on the expice.in website, but it was a small box. Last year also it was there, this year somehow I, I did not bring it. You just connect it to USB port. So it has a microcontroller communicating to this and then you can do, it supported something like 50 experiments. But another thing is now the next to next uh, talk. So we are, we are going to see something on that line but much more sophisticated. But the uh, technique is same. Python does what it is good at, data analysis, visualization. And the other end, microcontroller sits like a slave, then Python says do this, okay, it has to jump, okay, give me the data, it will give. So these two, basically the real time capability of microcontroller plus the data analysis and you know, visualization capability of Python. So that combination was basically SPICE and uh, you could again write, you know, three lines of code and get real time data and plot it using matplotlib and all. We have one, maybe one more question. Yeah. Yeah. This is something I should have put a slide since I didn't stress on XPICE. XPICE has grown with the effort from a lot of people, IIT and Nagarajan and there are many, many other people and even uh, the interesting thing is when I started in 2005, it was a C base because C I have been using it from 87 onwards. I thought C is good enough. And one person from Kerala Pramod, he's a freelancer. He told he can do it better in Python and he forced me to learn Python. So, <laughs> that's what so my Python is only, you know, starting in 2005 and after that, basically I was literally forced to learn that. Uh, but it took only two weeks to start writing this TK enter graphics program, but now decay entries of course is sort of outdated. Now you will see something much better than that. One question somebody asked here, yeah. You can easily switch over to this expice and matplotlib, pylab, huh? here. Now what you will see the device with uh, one mega samples per second, one mega sample per second and if you go slower, good 12 bit resolution otherwise 10 bit resolution. That anyway, that I, I don't want to explain that, it will, you, you can ask the questions that time. So, no, that is I told you, that is the reason why I did not talk about XPICE. XPICE all the documentation is on the website anyway and it will continue, the project is not going to stop. We'd like, we'd like to thank Dr. Rajit. So I'm getting two of them. Great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.